the iPhone 15 Pro and the iPhone 16 Pro. Very similar phones with a couple of technical differences. Now I've been using this phone for about a month, so I'll be able to tell you the things that have actually made a difference on a day-to-day -day kind of basis. But if you are after anything specific, you can check out timestamps in the box below. First off, both of them have titanium bodies with a matte glass back. A very good material which holds up well over time. And for reference, I've been using my 15 Pro for the last year without a case and there were very few scratches on its titanium body. The 16 Pro is slightly larger and heavier than the 15 Pro, but it's only something you really notice when you're holding both of them in your hands at the same time. On a day-to-day -day kind of basis, the 16 Pro pretty much feels exactly the same as the 15 Pro. Biggest difference is the new camera button. Giving it a tap will open up your camera app while a harder press will start recording a video. Now, unlike last year's action button, this button isn't customizable and is used exclusively for your camera. As you can see, the button itself is slightly longer and covered in a sapphire crystal, which allows it to be sensitive to swiping. This new swipe function allows you to zoom in and out while you're taking a picture and also allows you to make a couple of advanced adjustments within the app so you don't need to be going into your settings. The button isn't on the 15 Pro at all, but a lot of people would use the action button to open up their camera app, myself included. So I didn't think the camera button was that crazy an upgrade. I forced myself to use it over the last month, but I still don't think it's that great. In fact, I think it's more annoying than it is useful. Trying to make those in-app adjustments I found to be very fiddly and it was just quite hard to use. And sometimes when I'm going to take a picture, my finger would ever so slightly swipe on the button and start zooming in and out when I didn't mean it to. This happens a lot when you're trying to take pictures outside and your hands are slightly colder. I'm gonna come back to the cameras a bit later because I do wanna cover an underrated and pretty good upgrade with the iPhone 16 Pro, the display. On paper, they're very similar. Both Super Retina XDR displays with ProMotion for that smooth user experience. 6.3 inches versus the 6.1 inches, with the iPhone 16 having slightly thinner bezels. Honestly, not that noticeable. But what is noticeable is the iPhone 16 one nit minimum brightness. If you're someone who watches videos at night, you know it's just kind of jarring when your phone's too bright and you can't bring that brightness down anymore. Well, the iPhone 16 Pro has a slightly lower minimum brightness than the 15 Pro, which means less light in your eyes before bedtime. I know it sounds kind of boring, but it's one of those small quality of life type upgrades that does make a big difference. Speaking of making a difference, if you can, do drop my channel a subscribe. We're trying to hit 2000 by the end of the year, so by hitting the button, you are helping out a lot. Powering the 16 Pro, we get the A18 Pro chip versus the 15's A17 Pro chip. Both of these are very capable chips that can handle 99.9% .9 of things you wanna do on your phone. In my very untechnical tests, I noticed no differences between these two phones, and I definitely didn't notice any differences on a day-to-day -day kind of basis. If you are interested in the technical differences between these two phones, there's a really good article over on Nano Review, which I'll leave a link to somewhere, which goes into further details. Now the 16 Pro was advertised as being built specifically for Apple's new AI, Apple Intelligence. And it's kind of hard to say how much of a difference this is gonna make between the 15 and 16 Pros because the Apple Intelligence update hasn't been officially released yet. For all of you heavy Siri users, the update's gonna make Siri a lot more useful as it will understand things like natural language and stuff a lot more. But either way, the 15 Pro will also be receiving the Apple Intelligence update when it's released later in the year. So there probably shouldn't be too much difference between the two phones. Let's talk about the cameras. Probably the most important upgrades and the thing that people care most about on their phone. Both of them have four different zoom options. You've got your one times, your two times, and your ultra wide lens. But the 16 Pro now has the upgraded five times zoom versus the 15's three times zoom. And there's actually quite a big difference. With the 15, there wasn't that much of a difference in what you could capture between the two and three times lenses. But on the 16 Pro, that five times zoom feels a lot more like a zoom lens and allows you to get a lot closer to your subject. To be fair, most people probably don't zoom in that much, but it is just nice to have that extra reach when you do need it. The 16 Pro also got an upgrade to its ultra wide lens and it's now 48 megapixels versus the 15's 12 megapixel camera. This means increased resolutions and higher image quality when you're shooting at that 0.5 times zoom. 
I think a lot of people use the 0.5 times zoom a lot more than they realize. So on paper, this is a really good upgrade. But in practice, you probably won't notice that much of a difference, especially if you're uploading images to social media where things get compressed anyway. Having said that, having 48 megapixels on an ultra wide lens is pretty cool. It means you can take some really nice macro images if that's your thing. Before you convince yourself that you need to upgrade to the 16 Pro because you want that higher resolution camera, do keep in mind that the main lens, like the one-time lens, hasn't changed much at all. In fact, we've had a 48 megapixel main camera since the iPhone 14 Pro, so getting the iPhone 16 won't change your photo game that much, at least in terms of picture quality. What has changed quite a lot is the camera app itself, specifically photographic styles. Now, photographic styles aren't anything new. We've had them for a while, but they just weren't that good in the past. I actually never used it at all on my 15 Pro. But on the 16, photographic styles feel a lot more refined and it's a lot easier to adjust the filter themselves. To be honest, I've been quite surprised at how much I've used photographic styles over the last month. They aren't just these crappy color filters that just stick on top of your image, but actually help you create some really interesting pictures. You can check out my review that I did on the iPhone 16 if you're interested in seeing a little bit more. Moving on to the video capabilities of the two phones. Both of them shoot 4K footage with some really nice image quality coming straight out of the camera. Similarly to the 15 Pro, the 16 Pro can also shoot in Apple's log profile, which is honestly just so good. If you're someone thinking of taking video more seriously and wanna practice color grading and stuff like that, being able to shoot in a log profile straight out of your phone is just ridiculously useful. The main upgrade with the 16 Pro is its ability to shoot 120 frames per second at 4K versus the 15's 60 frames per second. But again, this is one of those upgrades that's actually only really relevant if you're into videography. I think that's an interesting point about these Pro model phones that we often forget. These Pro upgrades are often only relevant to a very small amount of people, so we probably shouldn't even get carried away by these fancy sounding upgrades. But that's a whole other point for another video. Bringing it back to these two phones, I don't think there's that much of a difference. I mean, fair play, they've made some nice changes to the camera, and maybe when AI is released, we might see some bigger differences then, but right now, I don't think it's that deep. If you were to ask me about upgrading to the 16 Pro, I'd probably tell you that I don't think it's worth it, but that's just me. If you have any more questions about the 16 or 15 Pro, feel free to drop a comment down below. Otherwise, thank you for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.